But I'm talking about the fucking greatest fucking fighter in the welterweight history. America's champion, Donald Trump's favorite fighter. Colby Chaos Covington, motherfuckers. Mm. Look, uh, we really appreciate your time, Colby, and we'll let you go in just a second. But I want to ask this because next week, uh, me and Casper are going to be in Anaheim covering UFC 241. And I feel like the biggest storyline going around there is people asking Nate Diaz what he thinks about you, what he thinks about you and your run in the division. So I just want to jump ahead of that and get your thoughts. What does this fight mean if he beats Anthony Pettis? Would you consider defending your title against Nate Diaz? Would you be consider fighting him if this Usman fight didn't come together? Absolutely. Nate Diaz knows his little fucking hooked on fawn and sass is is a worthy of my uh, the title shot. He's got a big enough name, but we know Nate Diaz ain't fighting me, dude. He he got mopped up by RDA. He got mopped up by Dung Hum Kim. I retired. I retired Dung Hum Kim. I mopped up RDA. Two of my sloppy seconds beat his ass. So. He, know, he knows his, where he stands. That's why he's trying to take an over-the-hill Pettis, you know, a guy that got lucky in one fight, and, and you know, they're trying to put some hype around him. He don't want to fight real a real 70-pound champion like me. He wants nothing to do with a guy like me. So, you know, he's not good anywhere. I'm better than him everywhere. I mop him up. I'll get in the black belt and choke his ass out. He's a little fucking pencil neck geek. Mm, do you think he even gets past Anthony Pettis next week? Yeah, I think so. I think his pressure boxing will get to Pettis. Pettis is over the hill. He's off the juice, you know. You know, he's got no more juice in him. He don't look the same. His body's deflated. So, you know, unless he's getting lucky with, with Superman punches, you know, that's probably not going to happen. He's going to get pieced up. But what does that mean? What, what are they fighting for? Are they fighting for the early board special? You know, that's the fight capital of the world. So I know John Jones was asking for New York. So I, I don't think I could be in the same room as that guy. The guy's a freaking idiot. He's out there telling... The world, oh, Robbie, you let the whole world down. John, take a look in the mirror. You let the whole world down. He, Robbie Lawler's not out there crashing his Bentley with hookers in your car in his car. Robbie Lawler's not out hitting pregnant ladies at, at, at red lights and, and running from the scene with all your drugs. Robbie Lawler's not smacking some girl's pussy in a strip club. Robbie Lawler's a good man. He's a legend. So don't you talk about him like that, John Jones, or I'm going to come up there and beat your ass. Mm. I, well, I was going to say, yeah, exactly right. You guys might end up on the same card together. Would you look forward to being a part of a press conference with Kamara Usman sitting there and John Jones and having the opportunity to sort of speak to both in front of the world? Absolutely. That, that would be a dream come true. I, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I, I can't I even imagine that. Both. That would be I, crazy. <laughs> I would rip into them both so hard, both of them. You know, just like President Trump says, Truth is a force of nature, and I would hit them with all the truths. They would be so much in their in their feelings, because really they're just ultimate feelings championships. So, you know, they're the ultimate feelings champions. That's about it. Besides that, you know, I know John Jones goes and cries in the corner and does his cocaine every time I burn him up on social media with facts, because he's a piece of shit. And he's not this guy that, oh, I'm all about Jesus, so it's all for God, this and that. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Oh, I'm a family man. Oh, blah. I'm a great dad. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah, great dad. Just doing cocaine, you know, having sex with hookers on the regular. Yeah, real good dog, dad and husband. Fake motherfucker. With a lot of your opponents after the fight, you don't have too many hard feelings for them. Robbie Lawler, for example, it looks like you have a, a lot of respect for him, and it, it makes a lot of sense. But with a guy like Usman, would you say that, you know, even after you beat him, there still won't be a friendship there and you still sort of resent him when it comes to that kind of thing? Of course, man. He, the guy's a piece of shit, dude. I've just heard from so many people like how he's so fake and he just acts like he's some superstar and he, th he acts like he's better than people. So, you know, he, he has no personality. Literally, Tyrone Woodley had more charisma than him. Like, that's sad. Tyrone Woodley has zero charisma so you might you know that's in the negative so for marty fake newsman so the guy the guy's a piece of shit man i mean he was ducking me so long when glenn robinson was his manager that glenn robinson died from it because he was he was ducking me so hard and wouldn't fight me so you know it's it's pretty sad the guys the guy's fake no one cares about him i'm gonna end him soon i promise you guys that you heard it here first uh let's be honest there i got a call from the president of the united states of america after the fight what has Marty Fake Newsman ever got a call from? The chief tribe of Nigeria with smoke signals?